feel like someone's just going to pop up somewhere. Scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Where's Dan when you need him? crawled out of the tent this is where we slept last night just basically on the side of the road in the little mozzie dome so the mosquitoes can't get us and it's a um, beautiful sunrise i can see the sun coming up over the hills through the trees in there so i'm just about to send the drone up so you guys can check it out because we're right on a creek down here it's a beautiful little creek i saw last night we actually drove through the creek and then um oh look at that we had to drive through the creek and then we just came up around here and pulled up. That looks epic. Oh, this is nice. Now I'm gonna make a coffee, send the drone up and then have a quick splash in that creek. Yeah, that looks like it flows to the east coast and we're right near the coast. So again, there's crocodiles. You got to be careful like the Wenlock is flowing to the west coast and it was you know 40 kilometers from the Pasco roughly so um uh, and you're right up in the upper upper reaches so there's probably no crocs in there but not far down the road you then cross a creek that's flowing to the east because we're right near the coast yeah so all right i'm gonna make this coffee and um get moving it's a, such a good time of day to be on the road driving so I'm re really looking forward to that. Hopefully we see something. All right, see you soon. or something over there too. What do you reckon Miles? Are you coming in mate? Oh, if you come in, you're going in the back of the ute. You're not coming in with me. Come on. What a way to start your day. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, there's more rapids up there. 
be nice to fly the drone through here. <laughs> That'd be cool. Best way to start the day. Up early. I mean, it was a late night last night. Um, we pushed it till midnight or just after by the time I got into the tent. Um, and it was unsuccessful, but like I said before, if you'd, um, you know, if it, was, if it was that easy and you found them every time, it wouldn't be as special. So I kind of like having to work with things and, um, and then you get rewarded by this, you know. If I had have just backed down that, um, where were we? When we tried to get up to um, the McElraith Ranges, we couldn't get in. If we just kept going south from there, we would have missed out on this. So. All right, I'm going to get in, freshen up, and get on the road. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we drove about, uh, um, well, we drove maybe 500 kilometers yesterday on dirt tracks to get to you know, to go down the coast to the McElroyth Ranges and then um, to turn around and drive all the way back up the Cape to here into Iron Range. Um, 500 kilometres and it was a late night, it was probably midnight by the time we pulled up at camp here. And um, we didn't succeed, we didn't find the green tree python but we will next time. Um, it's all part of it, you know, if, you, if they were easy to find it wouldn't be as special so um, we did everything right, all we got to do is come back again. Here comes Miles. What are you doing, boy? Now you're stuck. Come down. Come down and then back up. Come on, come here. Come here. Come on. Good boy. Let's see, you're stuck on the stick. Yeah, it wouldn't be as special if they were easy to find, so I'm going to bring you guys back. We'll definitely do an Iron Range episode. There's a few bird species I'd like to show you in here as well. And uh, and we're definitely going to do the McElroyth Ranges as well. I need to get access into there, so I'm going to go see the guys there today in Cohen and um, arrange access so Dan and I can come back and take you guys in there. Alright, I'm going to get on the roads nice and early. Hopefully we'll see some stuff on the road, some wildlife and um, cover some ground. I've got to get some fuel, chewed a bit of fuel coming back into here last night so see you guys down the track what do you reckon Miles? you want to play stick mate? I'm a bit early for stick oh. which one? this one? this one? All right, boy, we're gonna go. Come on. Can you get up there? That's it. So we've just hit the upper reaches of the Wenlock, me and Marley boy. And um, this episode, I'll get Marley down in a sec. Actually I'll do it now. This episode we're going to push down to a river called the uh, Stewart River. Now it's a system I've never fished before. And I've only got the little 3.7 metre tinny with me. Marley, get back. Hang on, just get Marley off. Now, the Stuart River, it's a system I've never fished and I've only got this tiny little tinny but I'm going to go and explore, <clears throat> see what I can find it'd be nice to punch right upstream and see if I can chase some, some, uh, some jack but um, yeah, I just want to explore a new system and camp out Now, um, yeah, we still don't have Dan back with us it's just me and Marley, so um, like I've said to you before, these, these couple episodes at the moment, I can't push too hard 
I'm up in Cape York, far north Queensland, and uh, but I'm on my own, so um, it is still really remote, and it's it can be quite dangerous at times being on your own. So um, I can't, yeah, I can't go too extreme, you know. Like when you got one vehicle and it's only me, if anything happens, um, there's no one there to help. So yeah, so this is the upper reaches of the Wenlock. If you guys remember back to our first few episodes. We put the boat in, I'm not sure how far downstream it would be from here, quite a way. And, uh, and we spent six days floating down river, um, just fishing and sleeping in hammocks and exploring and having a ball. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you go back to our first episodes and check it out. It was, it was just a game changer for me. It was, it was just the best trip ever. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a cup of coffee still quite early in the day and we've got quite a few kilometres to do today so um, yeah I'm going to make a coffee and just have a break and then get back on the road hey, mate. Hey. see you soon, see you down the track a bit alright so before I go I've just realised I don't have anything for lunch um, when I go away I'm pretty hopeless at packing food I always forget because we're normally somewhere where we can catch fish um, I just I've, I always, I've always got water but I, I tend to and coffee but I tend to forget food but this trip I did throw in some organic chicken breast because we're all out of fresh fish got the last bit of fish yesterday so what else have I got in here lots of veggies I can't find any garlic. Oh, garlic, yes. Butter, garlic, and soy sauce. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll marinate it in that. And then at lunchtime, I'm just gonna fry it up and maybe put it in like a, ah, put it in a salad. Yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna cut it up now. Put it in the container here. I just spilt my coffee everywhere. All right, got a bit of butter. Just gonna take a bit of that. Put it in the container. Um, chop the garlic up. So I'll just go say two cloves. Best thing about being out in the bush you can drop stuff on the kitchen floor and um, you know like vegetable scraps and stuff that's fine just leave it well I didn't expect to be doing a cooking segment on the Wenlock River this morning but this is gonna be yummy don't eat that Miles all right so I always crush my garlic I've got a mate who's a chef and he reckons he brings out the flavor I don't know. This is a terrible knife for, um, super sharp, but not the best knife for doing this. So today, we're going to push down to Cohen, and um, I think it was a ranger that I was talking to yesterday um, about the McElwraith Rangers. I'm going to go in there and see him in the office, which is the Cohen Aboriginal Corporation, I'm pretty sure. And um, even if I don't get access right now, it'd be good to plan access for the future, for when Dan and I come back through this area. Because um, it's all about contacts up here. You know, for our, for our footage to get better, we need access into, into country, you know, and um, we can just keep going back to the same spots or or go to national parks, they're easy to get into, but we want to go to new stuff, stuff, stuff that no one else can get into. So, all right, a bit of organic chicken breast. Here, Mark. Nice. All right, I'm just going to slice this into like strips. So if you guys have any ideas about our filming or um, anything you'd like to see us us do or do more of send us some comments below
we always read the comments and um, we really appreciate them and we we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can and you know make changes and try new things and yeah we're keen to try anything all right i'm gonna chuck that in in with the butter and garlic might as well do the other one otherwise it might go bad in the fridge look at that they're red winged parrots four of them the stunning parrots bright green with um with red wings um, red shoulders so obviously the males and that funny the males in uh in birds are all are, are always the prettier bird the more colors oh i think i just heard a palmy palm cockatoo now we are on the wenlock river so they um it tends to be their distribution, the palm cockatoo, anywhere along this. So across this this line of the um, of Cape York is where the Wenlock cuts across the, the top of the Cape, and um, that's their population. That's where they seem to or their distribution, where they seem to to live. You don't really find them anywhere else. You find them up in Iron Range, but still, it's quite close to the Wenlock. All right, guys, I reckon that's. About it, chuck that in. We'll shake it up with the butter and the gut. Actually, I'll just use my hands. I just washed them in the creek. Oh, a bit of soy sauce too, I forgot about that. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then a bit of soy sauce and back in the fridge. All right, a little bit of soy sauce. How gourmet is this? Soy, garlic, butter, chicken in Cape York. Doesn't get much better than that. So I'll grill this up at lunchtime, put it in a salad. It's gonna be delicious. Alright, straighten the waker. just come past this old abandoned by the look of it mine it's 
Now I think it's abandoned. I'm just going to have a bit of a sticky beak from out the front here. And if there's no signs or anything and it's abandoned, I'm going to go in and have a, have a look around. Looks really cool. I just looked with the binoculars and you can see tunnels and yeah, it's pretty complex. So I just had I just had a bit of a look in there. Just at the entry here now, there's no when the gate's wide open, it's ancient. There's no sign saying keep out. There's an old um, sign on the ground there saying camping area. So maybe they used to allow tourists to come in here and camp. Um, and there's a toilet block here completely run down. I'd say they used to have campers out here and they've just let this place go. <laughs> it's wild. This is absolutely wild. Look at this. I'm just gonna park down here so I've got a quick exit. Things go nice big mango tree there. I'm just gonna let, and I'll leave Marley in the Ute with the aircon running. Look at this place. All the old mining equipment. Oh, you could spend the day here just exploring, couldn't you? It's bloody, I tell you what, it's eerie. It's real um, Wolf Creek kind of stuff, you know. I'm just going to have a quick sticky bag. Hello? It'd be cool to see the, the shaft of the mine. I feel like someone's just going to pop up somewhere. Scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Where's Dan when you need him? Look at this. Wow. Good spot for snakes, huh? Good drill press. There's all sorts of stuff around here. Looks like an old bus being converted into a home. <laughs> Let's have a quick look up here. Someone obviously really creative has put this place together. Everything's welded up with old car parts and <laughs> tell you what though, my heart's beating. This has um, definitely got an eerie feel about it. Let alone snakes, like they would just love all this. And what is this place? Look at all the arches in there. Someone's gone to a lot of effort to make this joint. See these glass bottles? That's cool. Oh, all the windows were like that.
crazy, eh? I'm going to get out of here. And uh, get down to the Stewart River. Do some fishing. It's been a few days since we've been fishing. We've got no fish in the fridge or the freezer. Itching to get back on the water. Another month or so and these mangoes will be ripe. Ripe for the picking. The only thing eating them now is the buddy bats and the sulfur crested cockatoos. What a shame. Yeah, they're not ripe yet. Jeez, I feel like a mango. <laughs> Look at this old tractor. Wow. The old dam. He looks like a cartoon character. I wonder if he actually got stuck there getting out and just that was it or whether someone's backed him in there on his final days, his final parking spot. Look at this place. I think we might have one more look up there. I'd love to see the shaft, the entry to the, sh the mine shaft. I'll just open this door up for Marley. Stay there, mate. Stay. I've um. Stay there. I just shut the car off, so I can hear if there are any cars or machinery or anyone yelling out. about mining but if that is the actual shaft there can't see from here but I reckon that's the shaft there, be down under that. What is this contraption? Look at this season. Pumps. Looks like water out. Is that like a, I don't know, like a big sieve there? I don't know. I'd like to spend some time here exploring, but I'll tell you what, I've got the heavy jeebies. I'm getting out of here. It's funny when you're by yourself, you just. I don't know. Well, I do anyway. I just spook easier. Good boy, mate. All right, we're getting out of here. Really got a eerie feeling about it. Just expect someone just to look out one of those windows up there or something. Ooh. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about with the cape. This track we're coming through now. down here at the ramp. That's not what I expected at all. It's obviously really tide restricted to get the tinny in and out. <laughs> 